Welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie, episode 207. It is September 2nd, 2021. I'm coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. I'm Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com. And as you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. I'll say hi to a few of you. Hi, Amy. Hi, Karen. Hi, Lynn, Lucy, Tara, Mulan, Sharon. Oh, you guys are awesome. Hi, Linda. Michelle, Connie, Alicia, welcome. Thank you for your patience. I had to reschedule last night. We had, um, it was not hurricane related. We actually had a power outage yesterday morning. Um, I, we think from construction in the area and the power came back about, I don't know, an hour, hour and a half later, but it fried our internet box. The fiber coming into the house, that box, <laughs> It didn't, it couldn't get power anymore. So anyways, the technician came out in plenty of time for my live stream, but then his system went down so he couldn't activate it and I just had to make the call. But we are good tonight. We've got internet back. Um, we, I've got two fun folds for you tonight and I'm gonna jump into it just momentarily. I've got a couple of housekeeping items because it's a new month. My orders for, or my free gift for orders of $50 or more this month are either the star crossed embossing folder, the pool party striped grow grain ribbon, or the basic white medium envelopes. That's my September host code there. You can always find that at the top of my website, thepaperpixie.com. Don't use the host code if you're gonna order $150 or more, but I do want you to use the host code if your order is under 150. If you don't already have a demonstrator and you would like to request current copies of our catalogs, you can put a request in at thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail. Let's see, we're in the midst of celebration in the final month of celebration. That means you can choose free items with orders of, or order increments of $50 or $100. There's also a great host set for orders of 300 or more. And there's a fantastic join promotion for the starter kit where not only will you get to choose $125 in product of your choice uh, for 99, you also get to pick a free bundle from a list of 12. And one of those bundles is $60 and 25 cents. So you can get $185 and 25 cents for only 99. It's actually a 48% discount. The starter kit is a great way to fulfill your wish list for less. And I put together a great list of my top 10 reasons. I added that to a blog post on Tuesday, I believe it was. Now I can't even remember. Maybe it was Wednesday. <laughs> my days are running together. I'm actually on vacation for the long weekend until Tuesday. So a little bit of vacation brain today. Um, reach out if you have any questions and then we are going to focus on the gingerbread and peppermint suite tonight. I've got two fun folds for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip the camera here. And let's do that. Turn on the picture in picture. I want to show you really quickly where this is in the mini catalog. My husband Ryan is here watching for your your questions. He'll pop your questions up on the screen for me. I'm grateful that he's here. So the gingerbread and peppermint suite is on pages eight and nine in the mini catalog. And we're going to be focused, we're going to be using the ginger frosted gingerbread bundle. So it comes with the frosted gingerbread stamp set. I love this one. And the gingerbread dies, you can get these two together at a 10% discount. And then we'll be using the gingerbread and peppermint designer series paper. This is a six by six inch pack of paper. You get 48 sheets. Love the patterns on here. And many of the sheets coordinate with the dies that makes it really easy to cut out shapes. So I've got some easy cards tonight. One of them's gonna look complicated, but I promise you it's not. I have pixie-fied it as you know that I love to do. So let's get started. The first one is a double diamond fold card. I know many of you have probably tried this. This is my pixie-fied version. So here is what the card looks like. It's gonna be a little hard to see from this angle, but it'll sit up on its own. And it's this really cool fun fold card. I've made it fairly simple because I don't want it to be too thick for mailing purposes but this will actually fit in one of our medium envelopes. So I wanted to show you that. And I actually would probably put a cardstock maybe on the front and the back to keep that smooth going through the postage meter, but it is an awesome, awesome card. So again, it'll fit within a medium envelope and let's go ahead and get started with this one. 
We're gonna start with a piece of real red cardstock and I realize I totally forgot to set the white balance. Um, this is real red even though it may look something different on the screen, maybe a little Mary Merlot. This piece measures four inches by 10 and five eighths, okay? I'm gonna bring in the Simply Scored, one of my very favorite tools. And we're gonna start by scoring at two inches on all sides, so two inches. Then this side is actually gonna go right down the center at two inches, and then two inches again, okay? So we've got two inches and then two inches down the middle. And then I'm gonna make a tick mark at four inches. I'm just gonna remember that one measurement and just kind of flip and rotate the cardstock. I'm taking the ball, I'm taking the ball tip of my stylus here and just pressing down at four inches. So I started on this side, four inches, then I flipped it four inches. Let's rotate it four inches, flip four inches. Okay. Now we've got the valley score line here that I made with the simply scored. I'm going to turn that into a mountain fold for this next little tick mark. I've got the folded edge. I'm going to push that up to the top of the simply scored and I'm going to make a tick mark at three and one eighth. I'm going to flip this in three and one eighth again just so that we don't have to remember that many measurements. So you should see that tick mark there, and you can also see it there. And then we've got our four inch tick marks here as well. Now hold on to your stylus from the Simply Scored, or you can grab the stylus tip from the Take Your Pick tool. And I am going to then, let me bring in the template using a ruler and the scoring tool where we made those four inch tick marks and those three and one eighth inch tick marks. I'm going to connect the dots here and score. And we're kind of creating, well, we are creating basically a hexagon shape. It's not a perfect equilateral one, but there's that. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just going from tick mark to tick mark using this ruler, which I do have on my favorites page at thepaperpixie.com slash favorites. It's a two pack of rulers. You get a six inch ruler and a 12 inch ruler, and these are awesome. They're Mr. Pen rulers. There's actually a really cool conversion table on the back of this one. So again, just connect the dots. You can also use a pencil if the tick marks are hard for you to see, like that. I'm trying to catch the light there. All right, now we're gonna come back. I'm gonna fold again on that middle score line. Let's come in and burnish here. I'm gonna burnish along that score line. So we've left that as a mountain fold. On these two inch ones on the side, we're gonna turn those into mountain folds as well. And then here's the trick for these diagonal lines. Go ahead and fold it in half again. And then we're just gonna gently fold I'm just sort of, you know, coercing the paper to fold on those score lines. That makes it really, really easy for this. Now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna press right there on the corners of that. So those are gonna be valley folds. And then I'm just gonna kind of pinch. It's gonna take a minute the first time you do it but it's gonna start to go together like this. How cool is that? So again, the trick here is fold it in half long ways, gently bend forward and backwards on those diagonal score lines. By folding it this way, you're getting those diagonal score lines lined up as opposed to trying to mess with it to get those to fold, you know, trying to fold this way or this way, it gets a little bit too finicky. So once you've sort of trained your paper, it's going to naturally go that way. Now, obviously it's gonna to want to open up all the way. So I just kind of recommend that you just kind of press things into place. And as you play with it a little bit, those fibers are gonna break down a bit and then it's gonna gently want to stay that way. And it's such a cool little table display as well as a greeting card. So let's do a little bit of designer series paper and decoration here. I have four pieces of basic white and these measure one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths. 
Then I have four pieces of the Gingerbread and Peppermint Designer Series paper. That's that really cute peppermint pattern. And this measures one and three quarters by one and three quarters, four pieces. My tip here is to get a patterned paper that is not directional. It just makes it a little bit easier because what'll happen is that these squares are gonna turn into diamonds. And if you had a directional paper, it's gonna look a little bit, you have, it'll, it'll look, it might look a little bit funky. <laughs> So I like kind of picking the non-directional patterns for that. So let's go ahead and glue these four pieces together. I'm just gonna use liquid glue for that. It's always hard to put glue on one side of this beautiful double-sided paper, isn't it? So this will give us a nice little pop of white. I love that pop against the real red. And if you wanted to conserve paper, you could just do two of these instead of four of these. But we'll take it up a notch and do all four. All right, we've done those four now, and then we're just gonna adhere those to these outside four corners. The liquid glue works really well to kind of slide these into place and get them all lined up. You'll only have about a 16th of an inch of playroom around each edge there of the real red behind it. But this would be a really cool card for um, table, uh, like a table marker. What am I, I can't, can't even think of the word. Is, what is the word? A place setting. <laughs> oh, a table card, a place setting. This would be really cool for a wedding too. Um, but also great for just sending some cheer through the mail and the recipient can proudly display your card. All right, those are all laid down. Now I've got two more pieces we're gonna work with. I've got a piece of real red and this piece measures two and three quarters by two and three quarters and a piece of basic white that is two and five eighths by two and five eighths. Those are gonna layer over each other, but we're gonna stamp first, okay? So I'm gonna do really quick and easy stamping. Again, we're using the Frosted Gingerbread stamp set and the sentiment, sending you peppermint kisses. The sentiments in here are really, really great and interchangeable for the two projects I'm sharing tonight. I'm gonna to use real red, that's the wrong stamp. Let's do this one. Now you're gonna to want to, this is my tip here, if you're um, trying to work with a layout, I'm just going to sort of dry fit these pieces. I'm, they're gonna turn on a diamond angle here and I'm lining up those corners right along that center score line. Just sort of eyeballing that. This is gonna give me sort of an idea of where I want to add the stamp. So I'm gonna leave that there on my work surface. And I wanna stamp the sentiment in the top half of the diamond. There we go. And then we're gonna do a couple of peppermint swirls here. And one more. I love the peppermints in this suite. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and glue these together the white to the red. You absolutely can mail it, Dauber Do. Fits in our medium envelopes. I would probably add maybe just a piece of cardstock to the front and the back, or you could even just fold an A2 card around it, just so there's not too many speed bumps, but it shouldn't, it's not too thick. Now, if you start to add ribbon or embellishments or anything like that, then you might start getting to where you need some extra 
some extra postage, but this should mail just fine. All right, so we're gonna glue this into the center of the card, but I only want to add glue to the bottom half. So here is a tip I've got for you here. I'm just gonna take my ruler here and line it up at those corners, just so I know that my glue, you could use a post-it note or anything like that, I only wanna apply glue below the ruler. And that's just gonna ensure that I don't have glue going where I don't want it to go, like that. You could use dimensionals as well. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is just come in again, lining up those points along that center score line and also centering just so that, let me show you, centering to those intersections there, about a quarter of an inch on either side. I can flip this over and press it down as well. All right, so that is the basics of the card. Again, it's gonna fold like that and I absolutely love it. So you can see the sentiment when it's folded in the envelope and you'll also be able to see it and the peppermints um, when the card is on display. Now again, once it's folded and you can put something heavy on it or you can leave it in the envelope, it's gonna start to be more comfortable laying a little bit more <laughs> flat, but ultimately it will display. I love this. Now, if you're wondering where you can write your little note to the recipient, there's a couple things you could do. You could either write on the back side here, or if you fold this along the center line, you could write something here as well. I didn't adhere any basic white to this for writing uh, a little note because it's gonna be a little complicated. You couldn't put like another diamond piece on the back because that just wouldn't work with the way that this folds. But there's a couple different ways. So again, you could fold it this way and write your sentiment here or fold it this way and write it. You have a lot more space that way. So there is our double diamond fold pixified. Hopefully I showed you some tips or tricks and you won't find this too daunting if you haven't tried it already, but I absolutely love this fancy fold. So there's that, the double diamond fold. Now we're gonna do our second fancy fold. And this one I'm calling a flap fancy fold, but it's just got this center flap here. Really, really cool and really easy to make. So again, my pixified version here. We are starting with a piece of thick basic white. This is five and a half by eight and a half, scored in the center at four and a quarter. Hopefully you can see that score line. I'm gonna bring in the paper trimmer. And I'm gonna put it on the short side here. I'm gonna line up the right edge at one and three eighths. I like to use the one and three eighths here along the side. And I'm gonna slide my cutter down to four and a quarter because I only want to cut from that center score line up. Okay. So like that, we've only cut down to that middle score line. Now I'm going to rotate it this way, but we're going to cut down from the center score line down. And again, just remembering one measurement. So one and three eighths, bringing this down to four and a quarter. And you can actually see the ruler here along the side of the cutting groove or the cutting arm. So I'm gonna cut from the score line down. Okay, we got those two flaps there. Then for this, I just take my paper snips. We're gonna remove these two narrower flaps. I'm just gonna cut right up the score line here. And you can save these scraps for um, adding sentiments, add them to your scrap stash. You can always use small pieces of basic white. So then we got a piece that looks like this, and I did have a template for you, just so you could picture what it looked like. So we just removed those one and three eighths inch strips here from the front. I've seen it done a couple of other different ways with um, just adding a folded card in the center, but I kind of like this with one piece of cardstock. So now I'm just gonna fold right there on the score line. And I'm gonna make sure that that's lined up really well there before I come in and burnish. Those are the basic mechanics of that. Now I've got two pieces of that. I wanted it to be the gingerbread pattern, but I love this little plaid pattern with sort of that gingerbread background. These pieces measure uh, one and a quarter inches by four inches. And I'm just gonna put liquid glue on those. And 
And hang tight till the end. We'll do quick prize patrol as well. I like to keep this card flap closed and then I'm just gonna bring this right down to, you're gonna have about an eighth of an inch of the basic white peeking out from behind it, but it's coming right down to the flap there. I'm getting to the end of my glue bottle again. <laughs> Seems to always be on my live nights. Love the liquid glue though, because I can get that right into place. Then I've got a fun strip of the Gingerbread and Peppermint Designer Series paper. This is one inch by four and a quarter, and I'm gonna adhere that to the bottom of the flap here. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and add our sentiment. I love the sentiment, you're the icing to my gingerbread. Perfect for a significant other or a really good friend of yours. Again, we'll do that in real red. But this card will work really well with the wishing you a Merry Christmas or the Happy Holidays, even the sending you peppermint kisses. There we go. And then to save some time, I've already die cut from one of our papers. This is the pattern from the Gingerbread and Peppermint. And I just grabbed from the Gingerbread dies, this die, and I love how quick and easy it is to come in and die cut those shapes right from the Designer Series papers. It's just like a little iced gingerbread cookie there. Gonna burnish that again so we can kind of train our cardstock there. Grabbing a trio of dimensionals here. Just pop that down there. And then I grabbed our linen thread and I'm gonna kind of double this. I don't know, I'm doing probably about 12 to 14 inches or so. And then I'm just gonna do a double loop bow here, a bunny ears bow actually. That's gonna turn into a double loop because we folded it in half. Let's see if I did that right, I think so. Just kind of judging those loops because I don't want it to be too big. Do I ever use the black mat? I'm not sure which black mat you're referring to, Sue. Are you referring to the one that's from the Stamparatus maybe? I typically always use these desk pads of mine because they are um, neoprene, so they've got a little bit of give for stamping. Um, but yeah, leave a comment. Brian will watch for your, for your reply. I'm not sure which black mat you're referring to. Could just be my vacation brain. <laughs> Grabbing my scissors here. And then we've got that cute double loop bow. I'm going to grab a glue dot and I'm kind of going to roll it onto itself. A burrito roll, I like to call it. And then we'll stick the linen thread bow right to that. And we'll add that to our little ornament gingerbread cookie. And then the final one, you guys, I have two rhinestones left. I had to place an order for like five more packs. <laughs> oh, the, the, oh, the gray mat, the paper piercing mat. I don't typically use it only because, again, I usually, I've got a, this desk pad here and back there, but um, the piercing mat is fantastic for stamping on. I just don't need it with um, my desk pad for my live streams, but great question. And then I just added a rhinestone just to add a little bit of bling to that. And there is our 
flap fancy fold using one half sheet of cardstock. We've got a couple of extra pieces we can use for sentiments. So there are tonight's project. I went easy because it is a holiday weekend, right? So we've got our sending you peppermint kisses double diamond fold. And then this flap fancy fold, which is really easy. They're both very easy. This one just looks way more daunting, but I hope that I showed you some tips and tricks to make it easy for you and that you'll give this project a try. Again, these were from the gingerbread and peppermint suite of products in the mini catalog. So there is that. I'm trying to decide. I think that this project will post to my blog tomorrow and I'll have this project post to my blog on Monday, Labor Day, and my Airtable tutorial is coming. Okay, I did figure out how I can share my Airtable template with you, which is awesome. So stay tuned for that. That will be sometime next week. So let's go ahead and jump into Prize Patrol. I'm quick today. <laughs> All right, so here's the scoop for Prize Patrol. All you need to do, this is for US residents only. I just ship within the US. Hashtag Prize Patrol, leave that in the comments, whether you're watching, watching on YouTube or Facebook. Make sure you include the hashtag as well as the Prize Patrol with no spaces. Go ahead and flip back to this. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. Add to stream and we'll let those entries roll on in and then we will choose two winners and the winners, let's see. I don't know why I always forgot to forget to tell you this. It is the Positive Thoughts stamp set. One of my favorite stamp sets and I think we can all use positive thoughts right now. I hope this is a bit of a respite from all that's going on in the world tonight, whether it be lockdowns or hurricanes or fires, all of that stuff. So positive thoughts, right? All right, so here's the scoop. I'm going to draw two winners. And then I will let you know how to claim that prize patrol. Let's see how we're doing with entries rolling on in. All right, I think I'm gonna go ahead and draw our first winner. You can still enter even while this winner is being chosen. Yay, Pam Nash, congratulations. Awesome, yay, yay, yay. All right, Pam, let me put up on the screen really quickly how you can claim your prize patrol. Go ahead and go to the paperpixie.com slash prize patrol, congratulations. And let's go for winner number two here. I really appreciate you guys joining me live. I'm live every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time, except for sometimes I have to reschedule. <laughs> Yay, Denise Kane! Winner, winner! Congratulations to Denise and Pam. If you'll go ahead and claim your prize patrol, I will drop those in the mail to you as well as include a handmade card from my stash. Congratulations. I'll leave that up for a quick few seconds. All right, so. Really quick recap, if you've joined us late, my September free gifts are the star-crossed embossing folder or the pool party striped grow grain ribbon or the basic white medium envelopes. Please use the host code if your order is under $150. If your order is $150 or more, don't use the host code, but you'll still be eligible to choose a free gift. And if you don't already have a demonstrator and you'd like copies of our current catalogs, you can submit a catalog request at the paperpixie.com slash happy mail. So the double diamond fold card project will post tomorrow with all the measurements, uh, shortened tutorial and a picture of the template and the flap uh, fancy fold will post on Monday and the air table tutorial is coming next week. Thank you all so much for joining me tonight. I hope you have a wonderful Labor Day weekend for those of you celebrating Labor Day. And I will see you next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time for episode 208. Have a wonderful and blessed weekend. Take care. Bye.